it's a known fact that one reason for having native applications is to ensure that they have the same look and feel of all the other apps on the user's device. Every platform defines design guides for its applications in relation to both the user interface and user experience. As of Android 5, there are guides known as Material Design. For iOS, guides have been published in the Apple site. They're known as HIG, Human Interface Guidelines. Let's take a look at the Android ones. The Android platform includes, since its version 5, design guides known as Material Design to create a specific and characteristic ecosystem. This enables developers to customize the look and feel of their applications with the possibility of making them more user-friendly and with an optimized UX. As we'll find out, these functionalities will be provided by Genexus in two different manners, either through customizable properties or by default. Here we can see a sales application developed with Genexus 15 that abides by the material design guidelines, where it's of the essence to keep a uniform use of colors for certain elements throughout the whole app. For instance, when it comes to editing fields, we can see that those not active at a given time are underlined in one color, and the field that we work on at the moment is in another color. Also, when we tap on a button, it will always be highlighted in the same color in all similar screens. The action bar is one of the most important elements throughout the entire application. Its color becomes the app's primary color that features the brand. The guides of the material design indicate that the color for the status bar, the bar at the top, that includes the time, battery, and Wi-Fi indicators, notifications, and so on, must be 700 tints darker than the primary color. Additionally, the color of the icons embedded in the application bar must be lighter than the primary color, though a matching color, and it must always be the same when navigating through different screens in the app. A uniform color is also established for the whole application for the controls that the user activates. For example, tapping on a button, or text for confirming on a modal screen, radio buttons, checkboxes, a date picker, and so on. The status bar may be hidden. That is to say, it may become transparent under certain circumstances when the user slides the screen upwards to view what is below that screen. In addition, a shadow under the control highlights it to indicate that the control is selectable. That's why the property that enables the configuration of this height effect is known as elevation. The tabs are shown with an image and a background color, with an indication of the active tab with a color indicator and some elevation. Touch ripples are used to visually notify the user that the tap performed has worked. When an end user taps on a control with an associated event, a highlighted circle will extend from the point of the tap to the control's borders, with a totally filled in circle to show that the event is being triggered. This is automatically provided by Genexus. Android devices usually include three physical slash capacitive buttons, each one for a specific action. Besides the back and home buttons, there's a third button showing with a tab switcher a cascade of thumbnails with the apps recently closed by the user allowing the possibility to return to them. They can appear as a cascade or as a kind of horizontal grid. For these thumbnails, the application bar is shown together with its icons and label. That is, they are now displayed as they look in the app. Even though Android apps are beginning to include these buttons not as physical buttons but as software provided buttons, the idea is the same. When the navigation style is slide, that is to say, when the main menu is deployed as a window from the left, its size must abide by the guidelines, leaving a shadow on the right section when deployed. Additionally, when it has a hero image, referring to the image that appears on top occupying the entire width, note that the menu window must reach the status bar, keeping its opacity. This is provided by default in Genexus. Our apps must follow the Android and iOS design guides. Most behaviors are determined by default, without the need for developers to do anything. But, another part of the behavior will be implemented mostly in the themes, and another part as control properties. As of the upgrade 6 of Genexus 15, there is a new theme, Carmine SD, with two sub-themes, Carmine iOS and Carmine Android, that will be the default values of those platforms. 
Additionally, for Android, the default value of property Android base style has been changed to light with dark action bar. This property corresponds to the main object of the SD app. As mentioned, our applications must abide by the Android and iOS design guides. If we go to the default theme for Android, we will see that the application class includes a set of properties grouped under the name application colors, which will enable the definition of colors according to the material design criteria we refer to. What colors are defined as primary, primary dark, accent, and so on? Those that are default values in the palette colors slash carmine SD. And here, we can see that those colors are used to follow material design criteria in the app generated. This is the accent color, primary color dark, primary color, action tint color, activated color, and normal color. By default, Genexus also provides two material design features that we mentioned before. One is that the app switch color matches the app's brand color. The other feature is known as the touch ripples effect that generates a sort of expansive wave as the user taps on the control, as we've said before. In the example, on the Uruguay row to view its details. We may specify which controls in the Android app associated with the classes indicated above or their subclasses may include a shading in accordance with the value of the elevation property of those classes. This will ensure the observance of material design guidelines. Then we mention how to combine theme classes with other properties at the control level in order to achieve effects like parallax, motion in iOS, the hero image referred to in the case of Android, and also others. Let's take a look at those iOS design guidelines now. Various design guides for different versions of iOS operating systems are available at the Apple site. The main change occurred upon the release of iOS 7. One point in particular of these design guides relates to a minimalist use of colors and screen data. Let's note that they suggest neutral colors, neutral tones, for backgrounds, so that they're not intrusive. Then, vibrant colors for buttons and calls to action. Note that it says that only 10 to 20% of our design should have colors, to avoid competing with the content. And here are some of the suggested colors. Using a single color is recommended, preferably the brand color, for all actions offered to users, and that color should not be used for any other purposes. So, here's a screen with a recommended design, and another that's not recommended. This will indicate that users may perform actions on elements with that color. There's also the recommendation to use general icons, shown in the image, for those actions only and always, so as to not create confusion. For the tab bar that provides the main navigation between screens, the recommendations indicate to avoid the hamburger menu for cases of few items and to add text to the icons in a discrete manner when they're not universal. If they're not active, it's suggested to show icons with color but not filled in, so that they attract less attention. Therefore, two versions of each item must be provided, for when it has been selected and when not. We can also see that even the sizes to be occupied by controls have been established. All icons in the app should be the same size and have the same degree of detail and borders. At the iOS theme level, the only property of all these that will take effect is the last one, Action Tint Color, which will be used to paint icons and standard controls. Here is an example of this property in action. Parallax is a visual effect commonly used in applications for smart devices and web pages. It implies sliding one object over another object that is behind it at a different speed from the other, thus causing a sense of depth. In this example, we see a parallax effect with three layers moving at different speeds. The inner layer is the one with the slower speed. We may have the parallax effect in Genexus for a table or canvas and its content in relation to the container or to other controls specified in the scroll attachment property. For instance, when we have a table 1 with an image, and table 1 is contained in a main table, if, 
when scrolling downwards on that main table, we want that for every n pixels that the main table and its whole contents move down, table 1 should move down n by m pixels. Then we must edit the properties of table 1, and under the scroll behavior group, modify the default value 1 of scroll factor property to m. This scroll factor relates to the control or controls specified in the scroll attachment property. By default, it's the container of this table, which in our case is also the main table, but it could be a list of controls. Note that when m is bigger than 1, if we scroll on main table, table 1 will move in the same direction but faster than the rest of the contents of main table. Otherwise, if m is less than 1, then it will be the other way around. When m equals 0.5, table 1 and its contents will move at a speed that will be half of the speed of the other controls of main table. So, if the scroll is downwards, there will be an empty space between the image and the attributes following it. There, we can use the other property, zoom factor, to cause table 1 and its contents to do a zoom in in order to occupy more space. The drag with zoom effect enables us to expand a control, such as an image, in the background by dragging down the control on top. Since the control on top leaves space as it moves downward, the background image may be expanded with a zoom to occupy that space. To achieve these effects, we use the scroll attachment property and combine the scroll factor and zoom factor properties of the tables and the canvases. We've already seen the scroll factor property. The zoom factor is a decimal value, that is zero by default, that is no zoom, to indicate how much zoom in or out we must apply to the control when the user scrolls on the controls of the scroll attachment property. Positive or negative values will determine a zoom in or a zoom out. This effect is supported only in iOS 7 or higher. One specific case occurs when we do a drag or pull down with a table or canvas containing an image. We might only want it to extend in length instead of expanding in all directions with a zoom as we saw before. This is possible by using the same values of the scroll factor and zoom factor properties we use in doing a zoom in the image. But in this case, we change the value of the scale type property to the fill value. Just as Android's elevation property provides a sense of depth, iOS does that with layers and using gyroscope. The effect is known as the motion effect. The motion effect is achieved by rotating the device around its horizontal or its vertical axis. This causes a change in the control that generates a motion as if it were not fixed to the device. For the case of a horizontal motion, the image moves to either the right or the left, in the direction opposite to the motion, thus causing the sense of depth. In the case of vertical motion, the sliding will be upwards or downwards. It's also possible to combine both by changing the position of the device in both directions at the same time. To achieve the motion effect, we use the max horizontal offset and max vertical offset properties of any of the listed classes, which will be zero by default. The max horizontal offset property indicates the maximum movement that the control can achieve when the user tilts the device horizontally to the right or to the left. It's deemed as a motion factor where a greater value will correspond to greater motion. Likewise, the max vertical offset property indicates the control's maximum movement when the user tilts the device frontwards or backwards. A negative value of these properties indicates that the control moves in the direction opposite to the motion of the physical device. The zero value implies absence of effect, and a positive value means that the movement is in the same direction as that of the device.